The Big Five Divorce Myths. I'm Susie Miller, your alternative divorce guide. Myth number three. He or she are being so unreasonable, mediation can't possibly work. True or false? False. This is the myth that annoys me the most, I think, because we all go a bit mad and a bit angry and a bit crazy when we go through an amaz amazing life shift like divorce and family breakup. It's so immense that it is quite natural to succumb to anger, fear, um, and your emotional state will have a, a direct impact on the way you work with your ex, the way you relate to mediators, financial advisors. So the whole process is often driven by your emotional state. So if you are able to see that's happening and to take steps to, to uh, change the way you feel, allow yourself to feel more supported, less fearful, then you have a direct impact on the quality of your divorce process. In other words, if you are very angry or, or very fearful and have no self-esteem and completely crushed by the process, which is, is a very, very common experience of divorce and family breakup, if you perhaps were to work with a coach um, or even just go running and get physically energetic, you can change the whole way your body and mind work and then what you're able to do is to work much more effectively with uh, mediators and non-adversarial uh, people who professionals and experts who want to help you through this process. So I often hear um, mediators speak about couples, well no it wasn't right for them mediation because they were just so angry and, and, and so antagonistic to each other. I often ask them if those people had spent a bit of time individually or together with a, a life coach or relationship coach or communication coach then would that make a difference to how they then would be able to work with you as a mediator or a collaborative lawyer and invariably the answer comes back well yes you know, if they can get themselves in a better emotional and psychological space then of course they're going to be able to go through uh, a non-adversarial process much more naturally and easily. of um, helping people to understand that, that where their behaviour is coming from and that working with professionals who understand that, which is the beauty of, of working with mediators and collaborative lawyers, they understand that the emotional triggers are very much behind the behaviour. Um, it's very difficult for them to, they can't be your life coach or your counsellor. So they're often very keen for people to work with other professionals in the, in the well-being field who can support and help you to get into a better place. And quite often that's just by looking forward to what you want. So you might have had a very traumatic time recently, there might be infidelity, there might, might have been all kinds of threats and, and really horrible experiences where you just feel you could never trust each other ever again. But when you look forward, and if you have children, you need to look forward, there's no reason why you still cannot have a very effective co-parenting relationship. But you do need to learn to have your boundaries. And once you, in my experience, once you put those in place, which really comes with confidence and help and advice from others, because you, it's very hard to be confident on your own without somebody helping you and supporting you, then what you can do is you'll find that over the years, and I've seen this very often, the relationship that once upon a time you thought, well, we'll never trust each other. Uh, actually, you do build up a trust. You build a brand new relationship because it's a completely different one. It's a completely new one. But you need to let go of the past. You need to let go of a lot of the anger and pain that, that you suffered from each other because it invariably goes both ways. I've often heard of couples where they, they say the other partner is just being so difficult and so adversarial that therefore they have to be adversarial back. And 
what I've often advised and have seen play out in a positive way, even though they found it very hard to believe at the beginning, is that if your ex is being very adversarial and you hold the space and just don't play the game, um, obviously it's, it's a big ask, it's tough to do that when, when someone is accusing you of all kinds of stuff and being really difficult, it's very hard not to, to play back into that. But if you can hold the space and keep maintaining that you would like to use, for example, mediation, you would like to go and see a communication coach together so that you can talk to each other without shouting and, and losing your rag and that you can really hear what the other person's saying and that you want to understand their position but they also need to understand yours. If you hold that space, very often the, the angry person who is acting very much out of fear usually, there comes a point where they all of a sudden realise that they're spending all this money they're being given all this so-called advice to head down the adversarial route and they're discovering that it doesn't seem it's taking an awful long time and they begin to look at their ex who's somehow and it does take a lot of, of personal courage to do this has just held the space not reacting all the time just keeping strong and they and a strange kind of trust builds up and they come back and go okay okay well, we'll I'll give this mediation a try then and it opens a door and it's it is a seems a big ask but when you've got kids you need to do everything you can to um, to make sure that you can stay away from um, and what it ends up being a very long term sometimes it goes on for years these adversarial wars between the exes it's so destructive to your family you don't need to go down that road so I would say but you Chen, you be the one who decides to keep this non adversarial don't worry about what they're doing don't use that as an excuse to, uh, to play into that game. Keep your vision and don't be afraid to ask for help to support you in that because it is a tough place to be.